Babe, what is this? It looks like some kind of bug. I've been on many types of diets, oh. but this? Okay, a little bit sweet, crunchy. It's a fly. It's a beetle. Cricket, actually. It's a cricket. Ooh. Okay. Another one. Wow, what is this? Queen weaver ants. Mm. Everything's sticking to the inside of my mouth. Ew. These ants are not nice. No. Sure, not bad. No. <laughs> Last one. Final plate. Ew. It's like some kind of stale, dry wood. What is this? Super worms. Super not nice. I'm in Thailand, a country known for its long history of eating insects. And there is a reason why I'm being fed this grub. In this special episode of Talking Point, I want to find out why we should include insects in our meals and what's it going to take to move these creepy crawlies from being a novelty snack to part of our regular diet in the future. I'm starting my journey with Mai Tai Pri So Pa. We call ourselves Kon Kin Malang, which translates into um, insect eater. Oh, wow. Look at these guys. They're, they're huge. I know. This is called Mangda. In English, we say it water bath. This one is interesting. These are red ants. And beside it is the eggs. So we usually eat the eggs more than the mother themselves. Yeah, and we put this in soup and sometimes you mix with omelette. No wonder Michelle isn't squeamish about these creepy crawlies. She's been eating it since young. Is it safer that you wash them first before you cook? We just use plain water, soak them, and then we make sure that we wash them like maybe three, four times just to get rid of all the dirt. Insects tend to feed on decaying matter, which raises concerns over food safety like the bacteria and viruses they carry. So it's a good idea to wash and cook them thoroughly. So my crickets contain histamine. So I don't think I would recommend anyone who has a histamine allergy to consume them. Okay, meaning like yeah. if I have a allergy to shellfish, to prawns, exactly. that kind of stuff. So at the end of it all, why do you guys like to eat insects? First of all, it tastes good. And other than taste, people can actually consume insects for protein. In Thailand, edible insects are largely sold at markets and street stores. Thank you. I mean, just like that, from a pan filled with hot boiling oil, they deep fry it, they add some soy sauce, salt and pepper, and it goes from the pan to your tummy. Mm. Oh. I think they poked me. But since 2016, insects have started to creep into the fine dining scene in Thailand. I'm at the world-renowned culinary school, Le Cordon Bleu du Cid. And this is the genius behind the insect dishes, Chef Wilayrat Konoplaka. She agreed to let me in on the recipe for Pla Heng Teng Mu, a traditional summer dish. It's a dish normally served with dried fish. But here, she's cooking it with crispy black cricket because they are of similar texture. heat up the pan, not to go too high heat because we don't want the cricket burn as right. it's very tiny and the shell is very thin. Yeah, it doesn't look very enticing, you know. It will soon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You see the sizzling size and the smell for the insects yes. start to coming out. Then we add in the panda leaf. It's not going to get rid of the aroma of the insect, but it's going to elevate the aroma. Okay. People who doesn't like insect, they don't like the leg and the wings. So I remove the leg and the wing and I'm going to chop them up. Hmm. Oh wow. And the watermelon flavor bursts in my mouth with the yeah. juices and you know the crunchiness and the texture. So it all kind of it was the really nice. It was a combination. Say, yeah. a, a surprising combination. Instead of masking the smell and taste of crickets, 
Chef Wilai Rat cleverly enhanced it with different seasoning to create an umami flavor. She also has two other dishes which feature insects. Roasted chili paste and spicy pomelo salad, both with silkworms. She hopes more Thais can incorporate insects in their menu because these critters pack a powerful protein punch. 100 grams of crickets and yellow mealworm larvae, for example, contain up to 25 grams of protein. And the same amount of termites, locusts and grasshoppers can fetch 20 grams of protein. They match up to the protein levels in the same amount of beef. 26 grams of protein per 100 grams. But since insects aren't a better protein source, I would need a far more compelling reason to swap my steak for a worm. So I'm heading straight to the source in Saraburi province, about 100 kilometers away from the capital Bangkok. He's going to show me how they start farming the worms. This province is the first in Thailand to turn sago worms into food for humans. Oh, wow. Look at those guys. Ooh. Ah. So in here are the beetles where the sagu worm comes from. My first task is to help farmer Swart build them a home. Their little abode is made up of shredded sago tree mix, which doubles up as a feed. Coconut husks as shelter, and sugar to mask any odour. Oh, all right. So we've just uh, planted two buckets with five male and five female to get them to mate, because that's how you get the sago worm. It's a lot more sustainable to farm these worms compared to protein sources we are more familiar with. Take, for example, beef. To get one kilo of beef, you'll need 10 kilograms of feed, 22,000 litres of water, and a whopping 326 square metres of land. Compare all that to just six kilograms of shredded sago tree, six litres of water, and a 50 centimetre bucket. That is all that is needed to produce one kilogram of sago worms. They are also harvested a lot quicker. Just 50 days to reach maturity, compared to 550 days to raise cattle for beef. Multiplied by the 1,000 containers Swart has in his farm, he could farm up to 150,000 sago worms at any one point. So I must admit, this whole farm experience has turned out a lot better than expected. You know, I, I thought it'd be like really icky and dirty, but actually the whole process of farming the worms seems really natural and actually Pretty hygienic in my opinion. In fact, this is something we could easily do in Singapore because it requires so little space and it's just so easy to do. The global edible insect market is expected to grow about 30% each year. And it's not just because it's easy for edible insect farms to scale up. Oh. <laughs> but because researchers are discovering even more types of insects that can be added to our diet. So, have you noticed any change to this guy because he's eating these roaches?
I've been on a bug buying binge. It was hard to pick out just 10 types, considering there are over 200 species of edible insects sold in Thailand. So these bugs are packed full of protein, but I wonder what other nutritional value these critters might have. I'm bringing my stash of bugs to Chalat Sangti Vanra Kana, who has been studying the health benefits of insects for the past five years. Besides protein, what other benefits are there from eating insects? Some of them may have quite high fat, for example this. This is a silkworm pupae, yeah. contains quite high good fat like polyunsaturated fat, I have a EPA, DHA, this is good for health. If we look at this closely, okay. this is a heart or shell of the yes. insect. It contains a biopolymer we call chitin. This is like a fibre. What is that good for, the, the fibre? Just it, like when you eat vegetable, you have uh, okay. fibre from vegetable. Mm. When we eat and this go to our gut or intestine, this can be digested by microbes in our gut. And often it promotes the growth of uh, good microbes. And is this fibre present in all types of insects? Yes, but it depends on which stage. For example, if this is like this, you will have less chitin. Yes, uh, less. Or at this stage, probably it's really less chitin. Okay. Or no. So now I'm wondering, of all these insects here, which is actually the most nutritious? Most of them have high protein, high fat, but for example, a jumping insect may have higher protein because it needs muscle to jump. But flying insects normally need a lot of energy. So normally they accumulate fat like this in the stage that is still larvae. And most of them contain also minerals and vitamins like vitamin B. These bugs give us not just the protein found in eggs and meat, but also dietary fibre found in fruits and vegetables. And good fats found in fish and nuts. All that packed into a tiny critter? That's one efficient source of nutrients. We still have a lot of things to learn because this is only less than 10 insects here yeah. on the table, but totally edible insects is 2,000. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. Well, not all edible insects are eaten in Thailand, only 200 species. One startup in Bangkok is trying to introduce a new variety to the Thais. This is called Dubia cockroach. Boom Ativak has discovered that these roaches are nutrient laden after feeding them to his pet. Whoa, who's that? Yikes. He's a bearded dragon lizard. <laughs> okay. So, have you noticed any change to this guy because he's eating these roaches? Yes, healthier. Since he was young, he never go to the veteran. Have you smelled anything? Hardly anything. Is that normal? Normally, cockroach are omnivore insect. Okay. They eat both of like meat and vegetable. But we study them and we do some experiments. Like we set up sweet fruit like mangoes. They just go for mangoes. You change their diet. Right. First one, we can reduce the smell. And the second one, we have to re reduce the disease or the bacteria that come from them. Because cockroaches are known to be dirty animals, right? Yeah. <sighs> Normally, they live in dirty place. But when we contain them to the ecosystem environment, so far so good, I already checked their bacteria is less than normal. So if it's so much work to sort of, you know, clean up these roaches, why bother at all? These cockroaches like, already have nutrition. They have yeah. good protein, they have good fat, they're also good with calcium. Okay. And if we can like, reduce their bacteria or disease that come from them, maybe in the future that we can feed those cockroaches to the human. Boom is also making commonly eaten bugs taste better. I'm handed two similar looking sago worms to see if I can tell if there's a difference in flavour. The first one... It, it tastes a little bit like it's fermented and has a very strong, pungent taste. I mean, the first thing that came to mind is durians. Alright, now I'll try this other one. It looks the same. Mm, but it tastes totally different. It's a bit... 
Easy. Sweet. I'm not sure what flavour it is, but it actually tastes quite nice. Thank Nothing you. at all like the first one. Thank you. So why is it so different? It's changed their diet to the coconut. So these guys have only been eating coconut? Yes. So you're saying that simply by changing their diet, it changes their entire taste? Yes. Everyone just focus on cricket. It's a protein. Right. But if we would like to try for the good fat, yep. circle worm will be the one. It just needs to taste better. Okay. It might be possible to improve the flavour of these bugs, but let's face it, with too many legs, skeletons outside their bodies and a skittery way of moving, they just aren't that appealing as food. But there might just be a way I can convince you to taste it. I see little brown bits. Are they crushed up crickets and stuff? Are they seasoning? I'm at Typhex, Asia's biggest food and beverage exhibition held in Bangkok, Thailand. This gathering of more than 1,600 food manufacturers and distributors also features edible insects. But I soon realise... We have a ticket oil. It can be used as a salad dressing. ...that a few exhibitors are trying to sneak insects into our diets. My Japanese client, they do cricket soy sauce. There's a dazzling display of insect-infused food products. And I noticed a one-star product, insect powder. This is the sausage with the cricket powder. Does it taste like a real sausage? If you would like to taste, so come to my shop. This is a wheelie. Oh, it's a burger. Welcome. I'm served an insect spread. A smoothie with 10% sago worm powder, which replaces milk powder to give it more vitamins and good fats. No taste of worms, no sight of worms either. Cookies made with 10% cricket powder in place of flour. Sausages, 15% cricket powder to replace pork. Fries with cricket powder as seasoning. And their latest item on the menu, a burger with 20% cricket meat in the patty and 10% cricket powder in the buns. All that for an extra boost of nutrients like calcium, zinc, iron and fibre. Mm. Mm. It really just does taste like a good, tasty burger. The cricket powder is, uh, is concentrated. The fresh cricket Right. contain protein around only 20 or 30 grams, okay. 400 grams. But when they are processed into the cricket powder, the protein content is higher. So then 100 grams then contain cricket powder, 70 grams. Okay. Does this then become a more expensive sausage? One pack, four mm. pieces. So then we sell 139 baht for the high protein. How right? much does normally the sausages you buy? Another premium sausage is around yeah, 120, 130. To pay only about 80 cents more for mm. a more healthy version of yeah. sausages, I mm. think many people could be convinced to do yes. that. I started on this journey being apprehensive about eating insects. Yeah. But now that I know the nutritional and environmental benefits that come from eating them, I'd say I'm not as bugged by these creepy crawlies. I might be game for it, but will other Singaporeans bite? I'm back in Singapore. And I've brought home some edible insects for a very special tea party. I'm pulling out all the stops because these people I've invited are all picky eaters. Hawker Jimmy Teo has a decade's worth of F&B experience under his belt. Actress and MC Katania Tan is conscious about the food she eats. And like most tweens, 12-year-old Shriya Dawan is fussy about what's on her plate. Hello. My guests think they've been invited to a tasting session. Little do they know about the special dishes I have for them. Jimmy looks a bit worried. Yeah, I am. 
Okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay. One, two, three. Ah! <laughs> it is actually Steve's insect tea party. Woohoo! Okay. And you are in for a bit of a treat. We have a sago worm, grasshopper, and cricket. That's kind of on the stick. You also have the June beetle and the bamboo worm. No. No? I can't even look at them. Mm, I wouldn't eat it then, too. I just hate insects. The sight of them makes me want to vomit. Jimmy! Oh, my God. You can taste the salt. Yeah, other than that, it's fine. Oh, he's finished the whole skewer. <laughs> Let me show you a fact chart first, just to show you some of the facts that we, we understand about the insects. The amount of water they require, very little water. And it's only grown in a bucket, so they're really easy to farm. And the upside is, it's good for your body as well. Does that help? No. <laughs> they, they don't look convinced. I'll never try these in my whole entire life. So this is dish number two, which I'm pretty sure you'll like better. Go for it. No, I'm not gonna eat this. It is a chocolate-coated something. Yes, there are insects in this chocolate too. Basically, it's the silkworm, the superworm, and two kinds of cricket. Are you brave enough to try it? Still not convinced. All right, come on, Jimmy, be the brave one. Hold, hold it up, show them what is inside first. Is there a crunchiness inside? Not even a crunchiness, you only can taste the chocolate. And let us bring on dish number three. Ooh. Okay, this yum, doesn't yum. look that bad. I see little brown bits. Are they crushed up crickets and stuff? Are they seasoning? The pasta is actually made from cricket powder. Mm, not bad. I can actually eat this like a meal. You can't really tell that there's insect powder. Definitely was seeing the insects that was extremely unappealing. But this looks edible. So it's hard to change our perception of eating insects overnight, but I'm glad that my guests were at least willing to give it a try. I mean, the uh, cricket-based pasta was quite a hit. Because who knows, in the future, with possible disruptions to our food supply chain, we might actually end up having to eat these guys, not by choice, but out of necessity.